great to see lot of educators in the room parents and also children the idea that i'm going to share today will definitely make you think independently as well as collectively while well, i'm going to talk about the topic and the announcer has already said raising children to think like entrepreneur let me set the context by showing one of the weirdest picture that i have seen in my life and that's this no it's not body shop, uh, body shop or photoshop it's basically a bridge known as cholodika bridge and the name of the river is honduras river and you will be amazed to see why somebody has built this kind of a bridge which is actually of no use i was also equally puzzled but when i went to the literature to exactly find out what has happened when the bridge was built it was the river was flowing below the bridge and this entire area is prone to hurricanes and because of which lot of constructions got demolished in and around except this bridge because it was solidly built but what happened because of hurricanes the river which was flowing below the bridge started flowing adjacent to the bridge and slowly over a period of time the solid and the strong bridge became irrelevant if things don't change with time they have a possibility of becoming irrelevant somewhere i reflect our school education system in this picture and i want to take an opportunity of breaking some of the cholodika bridges among ourselves in few minutes angus madison a noted british economist and british underline as per his research he says from the first century to the 16th century 1600 years india's contribution to the global world trade was 27% highest by the time we got freedom it was just 3% no marks for guessing what exactly happened just one phrase british colonialism but during this period the indian education system also gone through a drastic change thanks to lord macaulay in 1935 he said that it has to be aligned to uh, colonial mindset and ultimately the output should come to industrial revolution where students can become better clerks and better managers by just memorizing following instructions and repeating what they do and what they were supposed to do but underneath this there was another important thing which had happened the entire fabric of enterprising india got completely ruptured and we got into job centric mindset doing a job is not bad but having a job centric mindset that somebody else will make a life for myself and i don't have capability neither i have confidence to make my own life that is job centricism and that is what had happened it's these days fashionable to criticize everything that we have uh, uh, in the past but let me honestly tell you during this period and even post independence india actually democratized entire education system i come from the state of maharashtra the maharashtra state is better known for three personalities chhatrapati shahu mahatma phule and dr b r ambedkar and all three of them democratize education by taking it out from the clutches of individuals or group of individuals and make it made it reach to poor marginalized and especially women and but unfortunately that time the at the independence we just had 12% literacy rate we just had 1.40 lakh schools as we speak today india has 15 lakh 40000 schools more than 1 crore teachers are part of this ecosystem and more than 27 crore students day in day out get the benefit out of it being the largest school education system on this planet and but the job centricity continues to remain while we solve that entire reach problem we couldn't make it more relevant so that they can link it to the future more relatable so that every child feels belong to and getting the responsibility for all the uh, players in the ecosystem frankly i am also part of this education system uh, during my school days i was extremely interested and probably i would have taken careers in arts dramatics uh, history and and stuff like that but unfortunately i was bright child i got great marks in my 10th grade and the day i got those great marks i wiped out all my love for arts and i got into science i got into chemical engineering in one of the most reputed institute not only in india but across the world which has produced four padma vibhushans just in the field of chemical engineering but fortunately for me and more fortunately for the entire fraternity of chemical engineering i realized soon that i am not cut out for chemical engineering so while all my friends were catching the flight to go abroad and do their masters i got out of that wagon 
and got into another bandwagon, MBA, again job centricity. Indian school education, does it make children and does it make children for preparing for any jobs? On one hand, we keep saying that every child is unique. But on the other hand, we keep them think that all of them are identical, put them through the standardized processes of assessments, learning and stuff like that, give them some 17 subjects which we believe are important for them to be prepared for the future, irrespective of what kind of, uh, what kind of calling they have, what kind of passion they have, and ultimately measure them on uniform parameters. But at the end of the day, we say that if they don't feel, you know, fit those parameters, they have failed. After giving 12 precious years of their lives, if you go back to the child and say that, sorry, you have failed, and the child comes back and says that, but you have never helped me identify what is my true calling. Who has failed? Have we failed or the child has failed? This is what happens with failures in the entire system. But do you think this entire system is fair for uh, people who pass and, and do brilliantly? I was supposed to be the bright student and honestly, I had a fantastic career. I got a job in one of the biggest conglomerate in India, which is more known for its trust and values than the products and services that they built. A decade I spent in startups, building, failing, rebuilding. And I enjoyed every bit of things which I did. But let me honestly confess, during all this my professional career, whatever I learned formally in my school education system, I hardly applied. And on the other hand, whatever I did during my professional careers and especially during my entrepreneurship, I wish I would have learned that better in my schooling days. And that is the dichotomy, that is the dilemma, personal dilemma which I was living and coming to the terms of it till the time I became a parent and saw my children learning the same thing which I thought irrelevant 25 years back. And they were learning that to be prepared for their future which is going to come 25 years later. What's happening? And whatever little chemical engineering which was remaining on my, in my brain got completely replaced by chemical brochure. And then I started talking to other parents. Am I the only one who is feeling odd? Or are there anybody who is also having an equal chemical brochure in their mind? Parents across the cross sections are either, first of all, they are absolutely confused. But either they are clueless or they are helpless or both. When the parenting starts, every single parent, in fact sitting up here as well, they would like their children, and if you can summarize in just three words, they want their children to be successful, they want children to be best in whatever they are, and they want their children to be happy at the end of the day. Till the end, till the board exams, everything continues just the same way, but now the reference point changes from what they want to what the society wants. And in this entire process, one single word that comes and sits on everybody's head, that's careers jobs because we all are job centric so whatever knowledge that you get whatever skills that you get ultimately that has to get you marks marks so that you get a better institution marks so that you can get better job and then all success based happy you can figure out as you get into those careers so your skills your knowledge is ultimately useful for ratta oh i know these days we have uh, competitive exams, multiple choice question. The only thing which has happened is Ratta has been replaced by Tukkas. And the entire life gets sandwiched between Rattas and Tukkas and that's end of everything. Let me put some of the more uh, you know, bridges. I realized the obsession of Marx when actually I was talking to uh, one of the forums and, and talking about how obsession of Marx is actually killing all of us. And at the end of the session, one mother walked to me with tears in her eyes. And she said, Sushil, everything that you spoke, I have experienced myself. My child was a great football player. He was a captain of his team. But you know what? His team of the school was not doing well. On the other hand, the basketball team of the school was doing far better. They were playing at the state level. And you know what? In the boards, if you play at the state level, you get 5 marks extra, 5% 5 marks extra. And that made me force my child to change from football to basketball. He cried. He repented. He resisted. But I pushed him. And ultimately, he agreed to me. He got into basketball. He got those five marks extra. He got into engineering. But till today, that guy doesn't play football. He doesn't utter a word football. He doesn't even see matches of football. And every single day, that mother repents. 
This is not the story of just one mother. Look at what's happening in Kota. We all have seen that as a factory of getting marks. Today it is becoming a factory of teaching children to give up their lives. Let's drill it a little further. I can, I can sense that kind of a silence in the room. We take a position saying that as parents, as educators, that we are preparing our children for the future and the future careers. Really? Do we? Let's take an example of this boy. He wants to become a doctor. He has decided, fortunately he has decided. In 2023, he is in grade 8. He wants to become a doctor. In 2025, he will be grade 10. In 2027, grade 12. Medical courses of 5 years. In 2032, he will become doctor. Nobody cares these days for MBBS. You need MD or MS or, or post -graduate. Let's say he takes another three years and becomes MD or MS, com accomplished. How many of us sitting in this room or watching this can really tell what medical profession would be at the at, in 2035? We won't be able to answer. Okay, this guy is not building a career just for one day. He is going to continue for another 40 years at least. 2035 plus 40, 2075. No, I don't want to ask you a question how the medical profession will look like because we don't have an answer. The jobs of futures are changing. The futures of existing jobs are changing. So we are in a dilemma. Whatever is there won't exist. Whatever is going to be there, we don't even know. So what are we preparing our children for? We need to ponder upon it. Number two, we always believe that let's prepare our children for the best career. You know, achhe career ke liye prepare karte hai. But do we have one life, one career? Gone are the days where we had those compartmentalization where first 21 years you study, then 40 years you earn and after that you enjoy that money and, and enjoy your retirement. Those days are gone. Now things are changing quite rapidly. The company that you are working may not last for 10 years. That company might last, but the job that you are doing may not last for 10 years. That job may last, but the skills that job needs, may, you may not have those for over 10 years. And even if you have those skills, you may not last that liking for doing that job. In any case, there can be multiple opportunities of doing careers. So if you look at all these things, you realize that future is uncertain. I don't have to tell that, you know, future is uncertain. And unfortunately, a job centric mindset, which is calling for, for certainty, cannot prepare our children for uncertainties. I think I have frightened you enough. Let me paint the positive story, otherwise you will kill me. Let's look at this graph. India, definitely it's a growing economy. We are a 3.3 trillion dollar economy as we stand today. If it grows just by 7%, which is the current annual growth rate, in another 25 years, we'll become 16 trillion dollar economy in 2047, celebrating 100 year of uh, uh, independence. The boy which I spoke about in grade 8 will be 38 years at that point of time, exactly at the peak of his or her own career. Number two, India is a biggest population. I don't think anybody can beat us in, in the foreseeable future. We are the biggest population, but at the same time, that says that we are a biggest marketplace. No company on this earth can ignore India and go ahead. And thirdly, India is one of the youngest countries. The average is 31, 32 English speaking workforce. Now, if you put all these three things into perspective, and then look at this, you will realize India is going to be the destination of opportunities, opportunities and opportunities. So on the one hand, you have managing uncertainties. How to manage those uncertainties? On the other hand, you have great opportunities provided you have skills to identify what those opportunities are and then ultimately build on those opportunities by, by building solutions. If you have those skills, then that is what is calling for. And now if you put both these things in perspective, you will realize there is one person who keeps doing both these things at the same time. And that's entrepreneur. So children really need entrepreneurial mindset. And that will really help them to manage the uncertainties of the future. At the same time, identify those opportunities and build on those opportunities and go ahead. Moment I talk about entrepreneurship, I saw a lot of smiles on the face. But typically when I talk about entrepreneurship, everybody says, oh, we know entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is business, danda, vyapar, startups, risk, profit, loss, all that stuff. When I thought of 
getting into entrepreneurship education for children. I spent almost a year to find out what's the correct definition of entrepreneurship which should be really taught or should be really taken to children. And then I stumbled upon this powerful definition put in the most simplistic way, just three phrases. And it's actually a definition of Professor uh, Howard Stevenson. He's also known as the lion of entrepreneurship. He's, he, he was teaching in Harvard Business School and he says, pursuit of opportunities beyond resources control, period. Pursuit, relentlessness, you know, having that drive, having that restlessness of what? Of identifying the opportunities and using your creative sense to solve those opportunities, to do, grab those opportunities. And while doing that, thinking beyond your resources control, don't think about resources. Either you will create your resources on your own using your creative thinking or you will collaborate with people by building that purpose, sense of purpose and get those people on board and then create help, you know, getting all those resources. And when you start looking at entrepreneurship in this perspective, then you will realize that this particular entrepreneur mindset required by anybody. Whether you become a doctor, lawyer, engineer, artist, guitarist, name the profession, you will need this kind of a mindset because then you can prepare yourself for the future. So this definition on one hand helps you to rediscover continuously yourself, take decisions, own the failure also and learn from that failure and rise up again. And that's how you can manage the uncertainties. And on the other side, have empathy around for people around you identify problems moment i talk about problem solving in the schools they say problem solving this is what we do with our children day in day out we do problem solving with children we give them a question paper and ask them to answer those questions but my dear friend who is going to define problems for them let's look at this picture in this picture you will realize that the guy who is having a white you know, wearing a white t-shirt is not able to see the match while other two are able to see the match. He being the shortest, he's not able to see the match. Now, how do you solve this problem? I'm sure it would be crossing in your mind. Simple, you know, give the box of the tall person to the white t-shirt fellow, and then you have solved the problem. Voila, that's the answer. You have solved the problem. But if I show you the third picture, and actually I have borrowed it from, uh, uh, you know, Hinkinson's uh, ideology, but the picture third really will blow your mind where now, we have defined the problem in a different manner. Now it's no longer that the, the shortest person is able to see the match. It's the non-transparent ball and because of which they are not able to see the match. You know what? Now even the shortest person comes here, he will be able to see the match. They now can sit and watch the match. They can sleep and watch the match and you don't anymore need all those boxes. So the power of solving problem is basically in identifying the problem. So you empathize on one side. You identify of problems around you, of, of, of people. You build your creative sense, create that creative confidence in their mind. We always keep talking about left brain, right brain, analytical creative. I'm yet to find out a person who has half the brain. Everybody has both the sides of the brain. That means everybody can think creatively. It's just the mindset. We don't allow ourselves to think creatively. And if they apply all these things or we nurture them to apply all these things, we will be able to create them for a better future. So, when we talk about raising children to think like an entrepreneur, without any offense to Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and Ratan Tatas and Bavi Shagrawals of the world, also take examples of Professor Muhammad Yunus, who actually built a power of financial discipline, collaboration among women and created microfinance across, especially in the developing countries and created that financial improvement. Let's talk about Vargis Kurian who actually help women by, by giving the power of the milk that they're producing and ultimately created a great amount of cooperative business. Let's talk about Padman Murganantan, who actually solved something which he was not even experiencing. But look at the kind of empathy that he had to come up with affordable sanitary napkins. And why go far? Let's talk about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, who at the age of 14 saw a dream of Swaraj. People would have said crazy with 16, 17, Maulas is thinking of Swaraj, but he really thought that as an opportunity, he had a pursuit, he didn't look at limited resources and that's how he could do that. We all can enjoy the fruits of that. So where do we start? We can always start, say that, let the resources come, let the government do all these things, 
but that's not the correct way of approaching this if we believe and we want our children to believe in their capabilities if we want them to uh, behave take the steering in their hand and behave like an entrepreneur and if we want them to become the change driver so that we can get all the past glories and not only stop there make india again the proudest nation on this planet and probably the universe then we have to start think like an entrepreneur and if we are ready to have that pursuit for grabbing that opportunity without resources of looking at resources of our under our control then the right time is today right time is now thank you very much